I show you the Ampex 6516 amplifier. This was uh, possibly the first monitor amplifier of Ampex. Uh, this is um, a theater cinemascope amp. So there's a good chance that uh, you might have heard them if you lived uh, in the 60s, 70s, 80s uh, and you went to the theater, to the cinema then uh, a couple of the smaller theaters had these units so actually Ampex uh, had uh, bigger units than this uh, because this one as you can see it uses a pair of 807 tubes uh, so the output tubes go here they are 807s and they are used in a push-pull configuration and you see the 807s have plate caps so they have the high voltage here on the plate and these have uh, basically 500 volts on the plate and then for phase splitter it has a 6 SN7 and uh, for input tubes it has 5879s and it has two tubes uh, because um, this uh, so the theater amplifiers they use the so basically tape head level input and they amplified that that really low level signal into a power level so this is a really old type amplifier and it doesn't if you if you have one or get one you will not be able to just uh, put it in your system and use it for home audio because none of its connectors are compatible uh, with anything modern that we have today just look at this strip so you see these two wires this is the power input so this is where the 120 volts came in and those two that's the speaker binding force so, so that's where you hook up your speakers to and uh, as you see the two they go into the chassis at the same place and, and they are wound together so it's, this is actually pretty bad practice and there's a lot of hum uh, in, in the output this way because you have the speaker outputs wound together with the power input so that's just asking for a little bit of extra hum and um, but you can be rest assured that this amp was really that quiet because in the theaters uh, you had super sensitive uh, actually not you had but the theater had very sensitive Altex speakers hooked up to them so that it produced enough volume for the whole theater and uh, they use the three of these amplifiers in theaters so left channel right channel and center channel and uh, and actually i had a chance to listen to them at uh, the university avenue theater so so here in hawaii they these amps were used actually in theaters even in in after the year 2000 unfortunately shortly afterwards they tore down that cinema at university avenue so you cannot listen to such amplifiers anymore but i recall seeing cowboy bebop in that theater and i was really amazed at the sound quality because uh, it, it had just a much more three-dimensional and much more authentic musical sound than I ever heard in any theater. So now we have those uh, Dolby THX systems, uh, like a couple of thousand watt amplifiers, uh, lower sensitivity, different high excursion drivers, instead of uh, these guys and those huge Altex speakers. And, and that, that has a very different tone to it. It has a very modern sound. But you would be more interested in how this sound. So, so one way I think as a theater amp, they were the best sound I ever heard in a in a movie theater, and uh, 
and of course in this format you cannot play them partially because they have the tape level input so actually you would need to get rid of one of these tubes uh, if you want uh, for audio use because if you have only one tube then it's still plenty of gain uh, to use a, a preamp level signal and, and it has an input uh, port here that's a 250k audio port uh, that acts as a volume control and it had the inputs here so instead of here you have to put an RCA jack you have to put a speaker binding post and uh, and oh, you also need, need to put in an outlet for AC as well so this is how it looks like after it's been rebuilt so this is the second unit that I already rebuilt so put a power switch here uh, input for the AC and I have a fuse there and as you see I took out the first tube so there's only one pentode and then this way actually it has full output at uh, 160 milliwatts input I mean millivolt input so it, it's super duper sensitive and even this way and you don't even need a preamp to drive it so I put the RCA jack in here and the speaker binding post and this here is a phase switch uh, I, I put phase switches in on all of my amplifiers so you can uh, flip the absolute polarity of the sound and as you see here I put a pair of VR tubes this, these are OD3 gas tubes to regulate voltage and here you see in the original version they just have the uh, capacitor power supply capacitors up there and uh, and that's that's just perfect spot for a pair of VR tubes and later I will tell you why I put the VR tubes but before let's just flip this over and you see the power switch is on this side there's the fuse and when you look on the inside you've got more of the power supply caps filter caps there uh, this is uh, these are the wires for the power transformer that's the rectifier tube socket and, and when we go on this side you see that uh, nice board there that, that uh, contains the caps and resistors for the phase splitter and driver section that's the volume control port and, and as you can see uh, this is all original and all stock and it was still working and being used in year 2000 uh, but but all of these wires so if you want to see there are a few things that have to go so basically everything on this board you need to change so none of these caps would I recommend to reuse again and uh, and if you upgrade these wires that will, will bring in a major change in sound quality I would say major upgrade because look at that this really uh, flimsy skinny old wire and when you look at it here look at this so, so these two this this is the power uh, this runs to the power switch uh, this really flimsy wire so this is really limiting the input current so if you just replace all of these uh, flimsy wires uh, into something uh, heavy cage then I would say that's mandatory uh, for for the rebuild and also if you just ditch this uh, uh, board and uh, just direct wire the output uh, I mean the sockets so you can uh, drastically decrease the length of the signal path and if you insist on reusing this board you can reuse it, it it's very nice and very neat and allows really ease of manipulation but I would not recommend making uh, the resistors like straight uh, it straight leads there because if it's they, they need to have a little bit of uh, compliance so you would want to have a band in the wire 
a little bit so that when it when it it it, sh it, it uh, the leads shrink and expand due to the thermal expansion and shrinking then it does not uh, force the resistor itself so you want to have a little bit of kink in there so that when it shrinks and expands it, it has a little bit of uh, pliability and that's one of the main reasons why resistors fail on the board if they are wired too tight so here these are not wired very tight so that's why they could last for so long as they did because these units they 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 were built as a tank because they had to be operational and you know the theater just running non-stop for hours and hours every night and uh, and if you flip back here now i have cleaned up uh, this unit but but here you can still see that there was some tar coming out from the output transformer this is the out output transformer and that's because the unit was abused so so probably one of the power tube or maybe both of the power tube biases uh, a little bit run away the tubes were drawing much more current than they should so uh, that strained the transformer because there was bigger current running through it more heat being produced and then that heat just started uh, uh, to make the tar ooze out from the output transformer and uh, so these are Pirlas output transformers this is the original that these units have the Pirlas 16311 and uh, I have seen several of these fellows and the most frequent problem with them is the output transformer blowing uh, because uh, just too much current and too much heat so 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 that that would be one of my design considerations that if you rebuild one then use them uh, give run them at a little lower current than the original um, specifications and these output transformers they they are john atwood made uh, measurements on them and that, that i found on the web and uh, apart from that i haven't found any description at all for these transformers and these are 25 watt units and that full power they can deliver full power down to 22 hertz which makes them one of the uh, best uh, peerless units of the era so yes these these are amps that can be made from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz they will perform really nicely as a full range wideband amplifier but you just have to make sure that uh, uh, you do not press them too hard so I would just derate it down to 20 watts or maybe less because John Atwood's measurement showed that the 25 watts output there, there was already some uh, transformer distortion creeping up into the signal so that means that it it's it's a little bit higher than than what it should be used for so I would say it's like a 16 to 20 watt power is reasonable from these amplifiers and and you would think that or oh, maybe that's not enough uh, but heck yes that's uh, really plenty when you use it with the right kind of speaker like high sensitivity speakers in the 50s there was an experiment that they did with these amplifiers uh, and that was the biggest experiment of comparing live music to recorded music and uh, that, that was done in, in a concert hall and they employed three of these amplifiers in a three channel stereo and they recorded a live performance on tape and they played, played it back on stage so they had a complete, complete uh, three channel stereo system on the stage with the orchestra and they kept on flipping the uh, whether the players played the pieces or it came from uh, from recording 
and they had uh, about uh, 50 to 100 observers scattered in the audience monitoring the response of the audience and and it was pretty convincing so a lot of people couldn't tell whether they heard live music or they heard the one being reproduced by these amplifiers so so yeah that they can uh, give you a feel of real performance at the concert hall level and uh, that, that's uh, that was a very interesting paper but i'm not going to details anyway but here i'm going to show you how the rebuilt unit looks on the inside so let's let's flip both of them up so you see here it has this panel for the power switch because it used to be mounted sideways so this is how it was used and then the operator could flip it on and off here and uh, and and it had this uh, printed board now the way i rebuilt it is i took took that middle panel off so the power switch is there there's the fuse there's the ac uh, jack and uh, i put uh, a lot of heat shrink on the wires on the on the transformer leads because um, sometimes the, uh, the, the insulation is crumbling or it's, it's really frail and old and even though this is not crumbling yet but it, it's close to crumbling and especially those leads that, that have higher voltages like you see the ones which here are, are in white those are the transformer primaries so that's, that has the uh, line level voltages on them and uh, those were in the worst shape so th they they all of them got that extra heat shrink and these were in nicer shape so I left them alone and uh, and 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 there is no capacitor bank here you see there was the original capacitor bank so I, I took them out and I don't need that many because uh, let me show you the schematics so when you look at the schematics for the power supply for the first C for C1 they use two capacitors uh, in series uh, 280 microfarads uh, in, in series to get uh, uh, 40 microfarad input capacitance and therefore C2 they use 220 microfarads in parallel to get 40 uh, and instead of that I'm using a DC link film capacitor so I use a single film capacitor to get 40 microfarad input and for C2 a single 100 microfarad so I up the capacitance quite a bit and uh, so this is my input so actually this one this is a little tricky because that's not the same C2 as the C2 there but I changed this input which was just a capacitor input to a CRC input so so this is the R CRC so I put an 80 ohm resistor and actually I'm planning to upgrade this to put a choke here so it will be a CRC uh, filter but for right now it's just a hero placeholder for a choke and, and from this 100 microfarad bank, this is from where I feed uh, the power tubes. So, so you see here, so this is being fed to the output transformer. See there it is, there is the center tap of the output transformer. So the 500 volts are fed there. And uh, then what I'm taking from that 100 microfarad caps there's also a, a 6k uh, power resistor coming that feeds the, the VR tubes so these are the gas tubes and um, and, 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 and the, the VR tubes uh, that, that's, that feed the, the screens of the 807 so in this amplifier the screens are run at 300 volts in the original schematics 
and uh, and actually when you look at the original schematics uh, this and I think the, the layout of this amplifier as well they initially probably designed it to have these uh, uh, VR tubes there to, reg to regulate the screen but then they changed their mind and they put in uh, a res resistor instead and they put in the same amount of resistance uh, that they would have used if uh, so they drop as much current or I would say draw as much current as um, as the VR tubes would draw and uh, and I figure and actually why I think they would have placed uh, VR tubes there because when you look at the later Ampex models and the bigger uh, models which basically use the same design as, uh, as this Ampex model uses, which is a push-pull pair of 807 tubes uh, driven by a 6SN7 phase splitter. That's the recipe of most of the Ampex theater amps. That's what all of us heard in the theaters, if, if you had a chance to listen to that and grow up with them. And, uh, and the only difference between the big ones and this is that they're it's not just one pair of 807s, but it's it's double 807s. So you would find uh, four tubes per monoblock instead of two 807s. But in that case, you find always these VR tubes, pair of uh, OD3s giving uh, or supplying uh, 300 volts for, for the screen. And then uh, this is an, an addition that I added. So you see uh, there is a, a pot and two voltage test points. So this is a, a balancing pot uh, to adjust the bias for the 807 tube so you can uh, uh, equilibrate the current to have the same current running through the two tubes so you don't need to precisely match them. So this is something uh, extra that I added and I think it's, it's really important to add. And you see these are the cathode resistors which are 500 ohms each and this is a 100 ohm spot. So you can uh, uh, basically go from the extreme of 500 ohm to 600 ohm per tube. And, and here you can see there's another pair of uh, DC lane caps and uh, these uh, these filter the voltage, I mean the, the high voltage further for the 6SN7 and the, and the input tube. And uh, the capacitors that I'm using, these are the Russian uh, K40Ys and uh, vest caps. And all of the resistors, they are Kouache pair film caps. And uh, so basically this is how it looks after a rare bird. And how does it sound? Uh, the original, in the original version I've never heard it sound in my system, I just heard it at the theater. Uh, but the rebuilt version uh, is, is truly phenomenal, there is not much report online about it. Uh, maybe you find like a few posts at audio forums and everyone who heard it, it totally raves about it and uh, there's actually two reports on it and both compared it to a Marantz 8B and they said this is much better than the Marantz 8B and uh, I haven't heard the 8B but I can comment that these ha are I, I think probably the best sounding uh, Williamson type amps that I heard and not just Williams on type but probably hands down one of the best amps uh, that you can imagine for music and why I'm saying uh, music and what kind of music it's uh, for analog music uh, with acoustic instruments and uh, uh, they, they really have a fabulous tonality and they reproduce the best uh, violin ever. So these are the only amps that have reproduced the 
credible violin. So uh, that 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 my ears could pick up as if it was a real instrument. And as you know, violin is the hardest to reproduce musical instrument, and these do more than justice with it. So I hope you liked this little introduction on these very elusive secretive amps and have a fantastic day.